Good morning, colleagues. My name is Jonathan Ray. I'm a veterinary surgeon from First Opinion Practice here in the UK. I qualified 40 years ago. Those 40 years all spent working in practice have been characterised by the implementation of change by acquiring and adapting to new knowledge, methods and tools. And as I said, implementing change rather than standing still, stranded in a bucolic past, dwelling on Yorkshire folk and spectacular scenery, or more pertinently to this video essay, my career has been one of implementing progressive change rather than becoming bogged down by a metropolitan political ideology formulated at RCVS without reference to our science, animal welfare, or our everyday experience in practice. My career has been one of progression to where I am now, and this progression has also meant professional improvement. I would like to see the drag that the current politics at RCVS is putting on professional progression dissipated, perhaps cherry-picked for its best bits, and a new focus emerge, centred on aspiration for our younger colleagues, rather than continuing with a pernicious narrative of envy, prejudice and victimhood. The starting point for my career, the place from which I have progressed, is the solid foundation of the traditions and traditional values of the profession, which in turn can also be cherry-picked for its best attributes. My view of those traditional values and tradition is best articulated by Gustav Mahler. Tradition is not the worship of ashes, but the preservation of fire. In my opinion, this fire from traditional values is particularly manifested by colleagues who have a strong sense of their professional identity and who hold true to the principal values of our profession, that is, the advancement of veterinary science and the improvement of animal welfare. We have not been trapped by the past, and we don't believe the profession should be trapped today by the past or the elite narrative prevailing at RCVS. Up until 2017, neither our professional identity nor our core values found themselves diluted or varied by political, religious or ideological beliefs. The profession had managed over more than a century to avoid these cultural diversions and had thrived to the point where the public held us in the highest esteem. From 2017 onwards, RCVS signalled in their strategic plan that they had the intention to force cultural reform upon the profession to make the profession the best it could be, without defining what this meant, and certainly not according to any of the traditional values which had brought us to an outstanding level of public trust, 94% in 2019. This ambition for cultural reform has manifested itself as a political movement based upon intersectional politics, which has not received a mandate from the profession at any time, and has changed recently into something which has absolutely no connection with our science or animal welfare, and which aims to correct our sense of professional identity to conform to its arbitrary requirements. Our colleagues over at the VSA have covered the emergence of the politics in a series of animated videos, links in the description below. Beyond having no connection to our science or animal welfare, this political agenda has no understanding of vets in practice. The ideology does not understand the existential concerns of the majority profession. Instead, it dwells upon a few and casts them as victims in their political drama. The ideologues in London have a narrative that the few have all suffered prejudice and discrimination from the profession. That's you and me. And because of this discrimination, the profession should be driven to a cultural change through the mechanism of identitarian politics underpinned by critical social justice ideology. I'll be providing definitions for these terms in the next section of the video. Proof of the discrimination meted out by you and me is based on the flimsiest of evidential basis anecdote, the lived experience of the victim with the perception of discrimination as the only criterion for determining that a prejudicial or oppressive act has taken place. 
There is no place for misconstruing a comment, no place for context, no place for the so-called victim being a sociopath, Machiavellian or narcissistic, and certainly no place for redemption for the so-called perpetrator of a perceived injustice. Instead, there is identification of the perceived injustice and blame ascribed to the alleged perpetrator. So much for hashtag be kind. The ideology is inherently divisive, exaggerating differences between colleagues in their personal and professional lives, and crucially, it is leading the RCVS further away from an already disengaged profession. The profession's recent and progressing disenchantment with RCVS, precisely measured by the decline in engagement at RCVS election time, correlates with the creep in form and meaning of the most obvious manifestation of politics at RCVS associated with its diversity, inclusion and equality agenda, which has morphed into diversity, inclusion, equity and civility. For more about this disengagement, please have a look at my previous video on the dismal levels of engagement of the profession with RCVS at our council elections, also linked below. Now I must apologise for the polemic in this overlong introduction to the subject of this video essay, which is about how the politics at RCVS is creeping away from the concepts which could have been popular and useful, and move towards a more radical, authoritarian and counterproductive ideology. But just to make the point once again, the politics at RCVS is intended to change the individuals in the profession and thus the profession, to make all in their mould and none of it has anything to do with our science, animal welfare or the existential issues of our practitioner experience. The politics is part of an elite metropolitan discourse taking place in London amongst a small number of people with no discernible mandate for their politics at an institution, RCVS, that controls our licence to practice and which we are funding to the tune of more than £10 million each year. Is this really what we need or deserve? Firstly, some definitions. Concept creep. This refers to the gradual expansion of meaning of harm-related concepts. Diversity. The concept of diversity encompasses acceptance and respect. It means understanding that each individual is unique and recognising our individual differences. Inclusion. The notion that an organisation or system is welcoming to new populations and or identities. Equality. This is the idea that in today's world people are no longer prejudiced, social injustice is in the past and everyone has the same opportunities. The notion equity, the notion of being fair and impartial as an individual engages with an organisation or system, particularly systems of grievance. It reflects processes and practices that both acknowledge that we live in a world where everyone has not been afforded the same resources and treatment, while also working to remedy this fact. Equity is often conflated with the term equality, which means sameness and assumes that we all have had equal access, treatment and outcomes. True equity implies that an individual may need to experience or receive something different, not equal, in order to maintain fairness and access. Civility. Civility goes beyond politeness, good manners and attentive listening. Overton Window. This is defined here as the spectrum of ideas on policy and issues considered acceptable by the RCVS Council and its officers at a given time. Gaslighting. The practice of undermining an individual's viewpoint so as to avoid challenge to the prevailing narrative. Critical social justice. A critical approach to social justice refers to specific theoretical perspectives that recognise 
the society is stratified, i.e. divided and unequal, in significant and far-reaching ways along social group lines that include race, class, gender, sexuality and ability. Critical social justice recognises inequality as deeply embedded in the fabric of society, i.e. as structural, and actively seeks to change this. Normative statement. A normative statement is one that cannot be tested or verified and is based on a value judgment. The Big E. Woke. To quote from Andrew Doyle's book, The New Puritans, few words seem to generate more conversations at cross-purposes than woke. Many who describe themselves as woke believe they are simply opposing racism and upholding the principles of social justice. We not realise... They do not realise that for the activist conoscenti, these terms have very different meanings. In other words, they're being naive. The matter is complicated further by specious claims that woke is merely a snarl word invented by the right, a tactical manoeuvre which undermines the ability of critics to effectively identify the phenomenon they are describing. An enemy without a name is impossible to defeat on the battleground of ideas. In other words, calling someone woke is just a slur from a fascist and means that anybody using the term cannot accurately identify those involved in woke politics or the ideas they are propagating. This is specious, as Doyle points out. This slippery denial of an identifier aims to obfuscate and defy definition, so we will be as precise as it is possible to be when using it in this video essay. Understanding what diversity means at any given time in RCVS is tricky, but its importance to RCVS is without doubt. In 2017, RCVS took on the activist charity Stonewall as their advisors on HR and management policy. RCVS subsequently embraced Stonewall advice and training for the next five years. And what began as an exercise in how to run RCVS morphed into an agenda to transform the culture of the profession, as detailed in the Strategic Plan 2017-2019. Once again, the precise history of this is covered much better by the folks at our VSA who have produced a series of animated videos, links in the description below. Our essay here is about the creep of the concept. By 2018, the chief executive of RCVS made the following comment. RCVS would be considering diversity in all its guises and challenging ourselves as to what does diversity mean. To some people it means ethnic diversity and social mobility. For others it means who's working where in the profession. And the president of RCVS made the following statement. Diversity is my number one priority. Nothing could be plainer about the thinking and priority at RCVS at this time. RCVS was fully bought in and phase one was complete.
This phase began with a determination, without any due process or debate, that the profession is guilty of insufficient diversity. The Diversity and Inclusion Group at RCVS was established with a statement of intent encompassing the profession collectively and individually. We need diverse and inclusive veterinary professions where everyone can flourish and be themselves, both professionally and personally. And in their diversity statement, they wrote, In our work to enhance society through improved animal health and welfare, we believe diversity and inclusion are fundamental to our core values. So, at this time, 2019, Diversity had arrived as a political concept of the highest priority to RCVS, though not necessarily the profession, who had not been brought into the discussion. Diversity had become manifest as an entity within RCVS with its own infrastructure, access to resources and funding as the DI group. Furthermore, normative statements were being made linking diversity to animal health and welfare without any explanation precisely how, the statements were made, but weren't tested or verified. Normative statements were also being made about the profession in general and about each MRCVS, applying that it, the profession, and we, the veterinary surgeons, had not and could not flourish without diversity, ignoring all our history and traditions. Forgetting history and traditions, including historical performance, like outstanding levels of public trust, is a fundamental tenet of the RCVS woke narrative. They require us all to drink the water of Lethe. History was erased, including, of course, the diversity shift along the gender dimension, which has started in the 1970s and achieved parity and beyond for women in the early 2000s. The foundation of the DI group and its immediate and forthright proselytising implicitly negated all the advancement made by women in the profession, a true act of misogyny and anti-feminism. So, by 2019, diversity was de facto, an article of faith at RCBS with a commitment to change the profession. In 2020, President Connell was laud lauding Stonewall training in how to think about diversity and making it plain that the requirements of diversity meant that interventions were necessary. And so the scope of the concept had now become doctrinal, as well as an article of faith within RCVS through Stonewall training and a forceful imperative, the necessity of interventions, a method for how RCVS were going to achieve the change in the profession. The concept had crept from is it an issue to it is an issue to tell the profession they have an issue to how do we at RCVS fix the profession. And all of this happened without challenge from debate with or mandate given by the profession. This was exclusively an elite metropolitan discourse within RCVS in London. At the same time as the primary diversity discourse crept from an idea to a faith and doctrine, it gained utility in other spheres of RCVS activity. There are three obvious examples. Firstly, in 2020, RCVS decided the profession needed advancement, as if the previous century of change and sophistication had been completely forgotten. The profession was arbitrarily given a new year zero, entirely consistent with its rejection of the progress made in the previous century our traditions and measurable performance. 
In the minutes of the Advancement of the Professions Committee meeting in October 2021, links in the description below, the word diversity crops up 38 times. Welfare, in the context of animal welfare, occurs only once, in an oblique reference to the Farm Champion Scheme and the word science only in the context of a future advisory panel. Existential issues for the profession, notably in respect of family matters, part-time working and pay, weren't mentioned at all. Just to emphasise our point, diversity was used 38 times in comparison. Secondly, in 2023, diversity crept sideways into another RCVS totem, the Mind Matters Initiative. For reasons, as always unspecified, the MMI and diversity have become conflated. So we have the following from future president, Dr. Gardner. As the current chair of DIG, I have been really proud to be able to contribute the college's ongoing activities surrounding EDI and, by extension, mental well-being. By linking diversity and well-being, we can ensure all members of the veterinary team feel connected and psychologically safe at work. Now, precisely, precisely how diversity and its related social justice dimensions have a bearing on mental well-being is not explained. Like so much of our CVS behaviour, there may be a plausible and evidenced reasoning, but we, the profession, ain't going to get it. Instead, it is faith-based value judgments for us from colleagues blessed with inexperience. Thirdly, our CVS have just published a set of recordings or webinars under the Vivet umbrella using resources marshaled by the advancement team. These cover six or seven themes developed from the RCVS Workforce Summit 2021. The audio and video quality of some of these is atrocious, particularly the one on general practice, but that shouldn't stop anyone from watching them. There are links in the description below. In all of these videos, the word diversity is used in the introduction and summary by the person from RCVS who is chairing the discussion. The word has become ubiquitous, a cliche, and when you watch the videos, you'll see it means nothing. Its semantic value has been hollowed out. The use of the word in these videos aims to support claims of diversity of viewpoint in the discussions, as if by having panels of speakers you will automatically get different points of view. Instead, you get the proselytising of talking points from the woke and agreement all round, a sure sign of lack of diversity of debate. Diversity has just become a buzzword. In conclusion, the concept of diversity has crept from something with a vague meaning to an article of faith, to a political doctrine, to a justification for intervention, to a rhetorical device and political talking point, an incantation from RCVS. And none of this has been done with a clear mandate from the profession, the people paying the retention fees, paying for this elite metropolitan discourse. Of all the dimensions of social justice politics, inclusion is the one most associated with discrimination and oppression. Both are proscribed in law, dis discrimination by conflation with inequality and oppression by conflation with unacceptable social norms, at least in the UK, but perhaps not abroad and certainly not historically. In October 2020, President Green said, if we can create truly inclusive professions, where all feel equal and welcome regardless of their background, heritage or preferences. Where we truly hold a zero tolerance policy to discrimination of any sort, not just by words, but also actions, then we could have professions where our members can do their jobs without fear of discrimination, harassment or prejudice. For those who live and work in the UK in 2023, it's worth asking whether the challenge of inclusion as the disciples of critical social justice politics would have it is actually an all pervading, as all pervading as it used to be. Asking, for instance, how inclusion is compared to the 1990s and how is inclusion compared to the rest of the EU, for example, questions of compared to when and compared to where, 
will give us an idea of where the starting point for demanding greater inclusion really is now, or how far exactly we need to go to create Green's truly inclusive profession. The starting point in RCVS for the political concept of inclusion is 2017, as explained in the diversity section of this essay, when, of course, we were still in the EU, a point relevant to phase two of the concept creep. At that time, the concepts of DIE were being formulated and framed by RCVS as being inadequate according to arbitrary and unchallenged criteria. Furthermore, they were being formulated by, in an immense irony, by the gatekeeper to the profession, the RCVS itself. Inclusion, by any definition, implies some form, some kind of gatekeeper exists, the organisation or person who lets others, capital O, in. And who gets to choose who is included in the profession? Well, it's RCVS. The follow-on question from who is the gatekeeper is on what basis does the gatekeeper RCVS operate? Well, traditionally it has been merit, irrespective of any other intersectional identity determined by the universities at point of undergraduate entry and endorsed and regulated by RCVS at undergraduate exit and afterwards. Thus, before 2017, the gatekeeper for exclusion could be readily identified as the RCVS because RCVS controls undergraduate education and postgraduate behaviour by statute. Beyond including UK undergraduates, RCVS has operated as the gatekeeper to foreign graduates who wish to work in the UK. In 2019, around 36% of the veterinary surgeons in the UK were foreign graduates, mainly from EU countries and the Commonwealth. This number slumped post-Brexit, but is slowly climbing again. Including foreigners in our profession doesn't seem to be a problem. Indeed, the increasing number tells us that they are not having problems with being included. So. If we are so successful historically at including and integrating immigrant professionals, why does the need for inclusion persist amongst the critical social justice concepts in the RCVS discourse? The answer is that it has another altogether more pernicious meaning relating particularly to identitarian values and intersectional differences, which are political rather than professional values. This was the first concept creep for inclusion, away from who can work where to who has a grievance, because with grievance comes the opportunity to claim exclusion through discrimination. By allowing the concept creep to grievance and then allowing it to be linked with discrimination, RCVS were able to highlight the importance of their inclusion rhetoric and lay bare, as they saw it, the flaws of the profession and society in respect of accounts of discriminatory and therefore exclusionary behaviours and practice. As an example, have a look at President Green's blog, platformed on the RCVS website, web relating her allegations of discrimination against herself. This is linked below. It is a one-sided story. By creeping to discrimination, RCVS aimed to switch attention from their gatekeeper exclusionary role to arbiter of the profession and public's malign behaviours as alleged by the aggrieved. A neat trick to divert focus away from their own role in exclusion. Furthermore, in order to support this, they promoted the primacy of anecdotal evidence from those with a grievance, which became all that RCVS needed as justification for accepting the aggrieved as being discriminated against and excluded. Once again, see Green's blog posting on the RCVS website. The anecdotal evidence RCVS became prepared to use is called lived experience. In March 2022, a report from an RCVS working party looking at exclusion included the following. The aim of this working party is to compare options for increasing inclusion and source evidence, both from the UK and other countries. It is therefore important that the membership includes those with lived experience. Importantly, at the same time as the adoption of the primacy of anecdotal evidence, the context of any negative lived experience and the role of perception 
were excluded as moderators of the veracity or seriousness of any claim of discrimination and therefore exclusion. RCVS also acquired a new syntax from the influence of their Stonewall advisors and their training, and from not so quietly held personal political views. This related to the determination of the need to focus on what they call marginalised communities in the profession. In its strategy document from 2021, the DIG presented selective statistics derived from the Manpower Study 2019, links below, these were derived from demographic data sets and collated so as to identify the new creep, the importance to inclusion of marginalised groups. Inclusion con concepts had now crept to the point where minority groupings within the profession had become, according to inclusion ideology, automatically at risk of exclusion, apart from one group, the largest minority group, men. No matter these minority groupings are already all veterinary surgeons and therefore definitively included in the profession, they are, according to the creeping rubric of inclusion, to be automatically viewed as discriminated against. RCVS's marginalised group label confers evidence of discrimination and therefore exclusion. As for the future, well, that concept creep goes to the ideology of belonging. And if you don't know yet what this is, here's a definition. The difference between inclusion and belonging is straightforward. Inclusion is a behaviour and belonging is a feeling or outcome of that behaviour. Belonging is a feeling. Hmm. If you struggle with this, have no fear. RCVS will explain it to you, but all in good time. Watch their space. In 2020, President Richards wrote, Equal opportunities is something I am passionate about. It means that everyone can achieve their potential without prejudice or discrimination. But by 2022, this concept, which had held historically and gone unchallenged, it changed when it was announced that RCVS joins United in Diversity campaign. The campaign highlights the importance of equity, diversity and inclusion. Following on from this creep to equity from equality, the future president of RCVS, Dr Gardner, made the following statement in her video interview platforms by posting on the RCVS website. Honestly, I think... Make the box bigger, you know? And people say, what box are you talking about? So there's an image, it's amazing, and you've basically got a picture of three people standing, trying to look over a wall, and one of it says equality, and one is equity, and actually equality is giving all three people the same size box to try and look over the same wall, but it makes no difference. So, equity would be to make sure that everybody, depending on how high they are, and how tall they are, gets a different sized box, and that's equity, and that's what we need to do. Since Gardner has used the box and wall metaphor, we thought we would use it to explain the creep from the historically agreed position of equality of opportunity and access to equity of outcome. Once again, we are indebted to the folks at VSA who have provided animated videos to help us understand what Gardner is talking about. In each video, we see three stick figures of different heights, where the heights are representations of three levels of an immutable characteristic, for instance, ability, or in the moment, characteristics like diligence. The height of the wall represents a standard determined by the gatekeeper, the RCVS, with a prize, whatever that might be, being able to see over the wall. The animations are self-explanatory for the most part, <clears throat> and I'll be going into a much more detailed dissection of this material in a separate video. Both equality of opportunity and access and equity of outcome have strong associations with justice and fairness. Equality of opportunity and access is the traditional model associated with a traditional definition of fairness, 
applying the same rules and the same standards to everybody. Critical social justice equity of outcome is very different. It means equalising the prospects of everybody with a new definition of fairness, where there is correction for undeserved inequality by a controlling authority. These two things are not, an, are not only different in concept, but are wholly incompatible with one another. Nor can you pursue the two things simultaneously, or rather you cannot do it successfully. The requirement for the two kinds of justice are very different. So, starting with equality of opportunity and access. The requirement for treating everyone the same is very simple and it's mass produced by long established educational achievements, more easily achieved by those with greater ability. Next, the versions of equity of outcome. There are two versions of this. Firstly, Gardner's model, which the RCVS cannot readily influence, and secondly, the model which RC <coughs> RCVS can influence. The requirements for equity of outcome must be handmade and tailored to each individual case according to some ill-defined criteria, a form of means testing. It's much more complex and it requires a much larger amount of institutional power. Some party must intervene to determine whether the outcomes are right, whether the prospects are right, and the, with the recent creep of concept, RCVS is set to do so. Civility is the new fourth dimension of the social justice agenda 
and has crept together from a number of different threads within RCVS. In 2020, the RCVS chief exec and numerous presidents co-signed a letter to the veterinary record titled No Place for Abuse of Veterinary Leaders Complaining About Social Media Comments. In 2021, the DI Group published their strategy document and defined their first principle as conducting business in a safe space, how they would have the conversations in safe spaces and provide these for other organisations. And in 2022, the outgoing President Richards wrote, I attended a VMG session at the SPVS VMG Congress in Newport a couple of weeks ago because I was intrigued by its title. Civility Saves Lives, Why Behaviour Matters. The work presented was from healthcare professionals, aiming to raise awareness of the power of civility in medicine. It was interesting to learn about the behaviour deemed uncivil, such as swearing, shouting, aggression, belittling or undermining, talking over others, rolling eyes, and tatting, and the impact this behaviour has on individuals, witnesses to the incivility, and on the organisations as a result of reduction in cognitive ability, worrying about the rudeness, reduction in time at work, and quality of work. All of these threads crept together under the Mind Matters initiative in late 2022, which now even goes so far as to offer training in civility. Incivility or rudeness has been carefully reframed in this time as tantamount to bullying and offensive discriminatory behaviour. The problem with this is the RCVS's concurrent acceptance of any report of the lived experience of discrimination as being beyond challenge, always believing the victim, specifically by ignoring context or allowing for any misconstruction in the perception of any behaviour or conversation. Thus, any argument which causes discomfort, perhaps by presenting an alternative viewpoint, a theoretical demonstration of viewpoint diversity, can now be deemed to be offensive and fall foul of RCVS's civility values. It can, in their eyes, be justifiably ignored, irrespective of merit, and the perpetrator can be villainised. The coalescing and creeping use and meaning has resulted in the superficially laudable attribute of civility being weaponised to suppress debate and challenge on any aspect of RCVS conduct and policy or the behaviours of RCVS employees or council members or anything outside the Overton window created by RCVS. And of course it's ultimately unscientific because the scientific method has a process, a series of steps, including challenge, which under the new civility concept can be shut down at any stage if anyone feels undermined, for instance. The merit of challenging argument is now subjugated to the perception of the listener. If someone says the earth goes round the sun, but the prevailing orthodoxy says otherwise, the new civility rules allow you to brand that person a heretic. So say if you were to argue for equality of opportunity, anyone espousing the equity of outcome viewpoint can claim they're being undermined and the protagonist for equality of opportunity is labelled as anything from rude through to a bully. Thus the civility concept is ultimately a weapon for telling us to shut up, to strangle dissenting voices, no matter how a concern or counter-argument is presented. In summary, the political agenda determined by RCVS from 2017 onwards has moved from an arbitrary starting point and set of values to more sinister, authoritarian and remote attributes without mandate from the profession without connection to our science or the improvement of animal welfare, and without relation to our existential issues in practice. And we've all noticed. That's why, as the RCVS prepares to become more woke, fewer vets are prepared to engage at council election time. Those of us involved in making these videos don't anticipate RCVS straying from this progressive path soon. In fact, 
We're expecting them to double down on this concept creep to become even more extreme in their viewpoint. This isn't a good thing, because an RCVS which does not regulate with the consent of the profession, because of alien values and behaviours, is an RCVS which is setting itself up for failure, or to coin a very overworked expression, go woke, go broke. Thank you.